everybody knows that it's best to keep your car in miles. That way you can see how many miles you have left until you have to charge back up again. No, no, no. You gotta keep it in battery percentage. That That's just the one that makes the most sense. No, no, no. Miles left is the best. That way you know exactly how many miles you can continue to drive until you absolutely have to fill up again. If, if you're just trying to go down the street and you know you got 10 miles left, that's, that's the best way to keep it. No, battery percentage just makes the most sense to the most people. Percentage is also the most accurate way of being able to tell exactly what you got left. Miles, you have no idea if it's actually accurate or not. It's always gotta be left in percentage. No, miles left is the best way. No, no battery percentage, man. Miles left, battery percentage. Miles, this guy. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We all have those other Tesla owner friends of ours that we get into this discussion with. Yes, this actually is a pretty heated topic and debate. I have my own personal opinion on which I think is best, but today we're actually going to test out which is the most accurate because I really think that's what this whole thing comes down to. Now, let me know down in the comments whether you're team miles or whether you're team battery percentage. I personally am team battery percentage. So is Michelle. We just feel like that is without a doubt the most accurate way to get a true reading on what your battery is currently sitting at. The miles approach, although I think does make the most sense and is easiest to kind of comprehend for most people out there, it's just simply not accurate. Teslas in general are the absolute worst at predicting how many miles you have left on your battery. So today we're gonna go on a little road trip and test this out. We're gonna take a look at A, how many miles I'm currently showing that my battery has, the miles of the trip itself and what it's predicting. And then we'll see if the math actually pans out. Now, we are gonna also do this for percentage too. So we're gonna take a look at both and see which one is kind of more accurate. And then we'll turn it into a percentage and see what the error factor is there between the two. We're gonna go to the Tannersville PA Superchargers. That's 74% of charge. It says here that our trip is 69 miles and that we will arrive with 25%. We're currently at 215 miles of battery remaining. It's saying that it's 69 miles for the trip. Nice. That means that when we arrive, we should arrive with 146 miles of range is what we should still have remaining when we get there. Now we're also going to make sure in the interest of science, Yes, science! We are going to put this in chill mode. I have honestly, I have never driven in chill mode. Why, why would you? Let, I, I don't even know where chill mode is on here. Wait, pedals and steering, here it is. All right, so we are gonna put it in chill mode and we are also going to drive the posted speed limit both ways. Hit the road, Jack. For all of you folks that have never been on the Northeast Coast during the fall, this shot's for you. We are arriving at our superchargers. All right, let's go take a look at the numbers while we're charging up here. We are at 97 miles. That is not 146. It's off by 49 miles. From a percentage standpoint, 33%. We actually bettered that. So the percentage was way better than the mileage. Let's go ahead and take a look at the energy consumption. So the, the gray line is what it was predicting. The green is what I actually did. I was above the prediction the, almost the entire way. The driving, we ended up being to the better by 2.9%. Our climate control was to the better by about 1%. Our battery conditioning was to the better by about 24 I just don't get it. It's literally that off. I got about 20 minutes left before I can uh, head back home, so... I am in an outlet, might as well do a little bit of shopping. Yeah, I, I did a little bit of shopping. Look, yeah, I, the nearest outlets to us are like an hour away, so you gotta kinda take advantage. Before we head on the road, let's take a look at the numbers and see, again, what we're starting with for trip number two on the way back home. We are currently showing 232 miles in percentage. 
that's a flat 80%. We're saying it's a 70 mile trip. We should arrive with 59% battery. So 232 minus the 70 it's predicting, 162. We should be at 162 miles of range by the time we get home. Obviously I have absolutely zero faith in the mileage part, in the percentage part, I do. We are home. We are officially home. Let's take a look at the numbers. We are currently showing 51% battery against our projected 59. That's a decrease of 8% battery. 149 miles is what we're currently at. 162 is what was projected. That's 13 miles to the worse. That's actually a better margin of error on the mileage side than it is on the battery. Interesting, let's take a look at our charge stats here. We obviously did a lot worse than what we were originally projecting. As far as the reasons why, let's take a look. So the driving itself, meaning like how fast I was driving, contributed to, this, to a 6.6% loss. We actually gained a little bit. We gained 1.8% in climate. Elevation was responsible for 2.4, almost 2.5% of it. So what do we learn from this? I have no freaking idea. I feel like every time I try to do one of these videos, science on the way there, uh, it supports one thing on the way back, it supports another, I, I don't get it. So after our last kind of inconclusive experiment, I decided we're gonna do another experiment. But this time, instead of heading to the mountains and going to the Poconos, this time we're gonna do more of a flat road road trip. Today, we happen to be taking a family road trip to Hershey Park. We're gonna check out the Christmas lights that are there for Hershey Park's Candy Lane. So, because it's a relatively longer road trip and it's a flat one, I decided we're gonna kind of add an extra trip into this video. What's up, Michelle? What's up? Let's check out the destination details. We are currently at 78% battery or 228 miles. It is 101 miles away. 127 miles is what we should arrive at Hershey Park with. It is saying that we should arrive with 27% battery. Which do you think is gonna be accurate? Or do you think either is gonna be accurate? The percent will be much closer. The miles are never accurate. So see, she is team percentage too. I'll check in with you guys when we get to Hershey and then we'll bring you into the park for a little bit. We have arrived at Hershey, yes. We somehow made it. Percentage-wise, we're at 26% is what we arrived at. So it was only off by 1%. And when we pulled in and, and it said you've arrived, we were at 27%. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Mileage, oh, yikes, 75 miles. It was off by like 50 miles. I mean, we, we stayed true to the, to the prediction. So if we stay true to the prediction, why is the mileage off by so, so much? much? I don't get it. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. The percentage, spot on. The mileage, way off. So I just, it just doesn't make any sense how one could be so bad as opposed to the other. Let's uh, go have some oh, fun. Enjoy. Yeah, let's go have some fun at Hershey Park. We'll bring you along too so you, can, so you can see all the Christmas lights. You guys want to do some Hershey? Sure. At least one of them's excited. Percentage or are you team miles? So I've done very little with percentage in all honesty. I've generally always oh. used mileage um, It's not overly accurate though. No, so on the way here our percentage was only off by 1% from the forecast But the miles was off by 50. 50, 50. Wow Interesting see I Michelle and I were team percentage you guys gotta let us know down in the comments Are you team battery percentage or team miles left? Hold up, I am on my way I'm in motion Let's go to the ocean 
had a very fun, but very cold, Actually, cold day at Hershey. We're gonna give you two sets of stats on the way home because we have a supercharger stop that we have to make on the way home. We are currently at 23% battery or 66 miles is what we got left. 40 miles is the trip. That means we should arrive with 26 miles left if it's going to be accurate. We should be arriving with 3% battery and 26 total miles left. So this is definitely the lowest yeah, that we've ever done this. That, that we've ever run our car to. You, check this out. We are at six miles is what we got left or 2%. In terms of mileage, it was off by what? 20 miles exactly? Because I think yes. we were supposed to arrive at 26 and the percentage was only off by 1%. So again, the percentage was much closer than the mileage, but. Oh, come on Tesla. This gave me a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, like quickly after departing Hershey Park, all of a sudden our prediction went from arriving at 3% down to 1. It kind of got a little scary, and we actually preferred to watch mileage over the percent because we've got no correlation of what percentage equals mileage. Yeah, so I just kept doing the calculations in my head, and then we were, I think, 2 miles away when it went back up to 2%. So I'm not sure how um, we gained that, but... I definitely, for the first time, preferred watching miles, and I don't normally like watching the miles. So we're gonna charge back up, and then we're gonna see what the new predictions are for the second half of the trip. Denver rest stop. Seen you a time or two. We charged up to 62%, which is what we're currently sitting at. We are predicted to make it back to our house with 32%. We are currently at 179 miles left on the battery in terms of battery and it's a 61 mile journey home, which means we should be arriving with, what's that, 118? Let's see if percentage continues to be the winner. We just got home. It is very late. We are very tired. We are arriving with 30% battery left. What was it supposed to be at? 32. 32, so we were under by 2%. The mileage we arrived back with is 87 miles. What were we supposed to be at? 118. Woo! 118, so that's... Mental math is, is difficult this late at night. 31. 31. We were a little under what the marker was for the prediction, and the majority of that came from driving. So now we've got five data points to kind of take a look at and review tomorrow when, you know, my brain's working a little bit better. I hope you guys had fun coming with us to Hershey. We'll see you guys in the morning. It is the next day and the results, they're in. There's a whole lot of numbers to go over and it's really, really cold out here. So let's go into the car and talk about these numbers. I've got all this stuff written down, so I'm just gonna read these numbers off. Now on our trip out to the Poconos, it was a 69 mile trip. We should have arrived at the superchargers of the Poconos with 146 miles left on the battery. We actually arrived with 97 miles left on the battery, which was a difference of minus 49 miles. If we look at the margin for error on that, that's an error of margin of 71.0. 
0.01%. My, that is really high. Now on the percentage side, it was expected to be about 49% battery usage on the trip. We should have arrived with 25% left on the battery, but we actually arrived with 33% on the battery, which means we were plus 12%. Now in terms of a margin for error, that would give us a plus of 24.49% to the good. Now, on the way back from the Poconos, the numbers, they were quite different. We were expected to arrive back home with 162 miles left on the battery. We actually arrived with 149 miles left on the battery. That was a difference of 13 miles, minus 13 miles. 13 miles is a lot better of a situation than it was on the way out. That's a margin of error of 18.57%. We were expected to arrive with 59% left on the battery we actually arrived with 51 percent on the battery so that was a difference of minus eight percent much much different than on the way there that was 38.10 percent margin of error if we average those numbers out the margin of error on the mileage side for the entire trip both ways the average margin of error was 44.79 percent on the percentage side of things, the margin for error is only 6.805. That's actually not that bad. On the way to Hershey Park, it was 101 total mile drive. We should have arrived at Hershey Park with 127 miles. We actually arrived at Hershey Park with 75 miles, which means it was a difference of minus 52 miles when we got there. The error margin on the mile side of things was 51.48 percent that's huge 50 percent margin of error at that point no you're nowhere close we should have arrived with 27 percent still left on the battery we actually arrived with 26 percent still left on the battery which left us a difference of minus one percent expectation versus the actual now if we turn that into a margin of error the margin of error on that is 1.96 percent now let's take a look at the trip back from Hershey Park Hershey Park to the supercharger it was a 40 mile trip we were expected to arrive with 26 miles left on the battery we actually arrived with six miles on the battery which was a difference of minus 20 miles the error of margin on that is 50 percent even 50 percent flat we were supposed to arrive with 3% left on the battery. We actually arrived with 2% left on the battery, which gave us a, a, another difference of minus 1%. So the error margin, this time on the percentage side, was 5% flat. After we supercharged up, we drove home. That drive was 61 total miles. We were supposed to arrive with 118 miles left on our battery. When we actually arrived home, there was 87 miles left on the battery, which was a difference of minus 31 miles. The error of margin on that is 50.82%. We were supposed to arrive home with 32% left on our battery. We actually arrived home with 30% on our battery, which was a difference of minus 2%. That gave us an error margin on the percentage side of things of 6.66%. If we average out the error of margins on the three data sets that we have for the Hershey Park trip, on the mileage side, the error of margin is 50.77%. Whereas if you're using percentage up on your screen, the margin of error is only 4.54%. I think the moral of the story is neither way is truly perfect. Regardless, there, there's still some figuring out that Tesla needs to do when it comes to narrowing down on the accuracy of either method, whether you're talking about percentage, or whether you're talking about miles left on the battery. We are gonna stay on team percentage. That said, I do acknowledge the fact that battery percentage isn't exactly a unit of measurement that's easy to comprehend when you're in a range anxiety type of situation. But we do need more accurate data from Tesla. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, we'd appreciate it if you go ahead and smash that like button. And while you're down there, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button too. Guys, if you want to see a great video about some awesome new Tesla accessories that just came out, go ahead and click that right there. If you want to see the last video we did, click that one right there. Thanks as always, guys, and we'll see you in another one real soon.